Day one of the web app was absolutely dead, but day two is completely different. The market is rising and we've got to be ready and know who to invest in. And on top of that, I have found one of the sneakiest investment methods I've ever seen in any FIFA. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Sean, AKA Elite. And I wanna thank you guys for all the support on the last two videos. It's been absolutely amazing. Thank you guys for dropping the likes, dropping the, dropping the comments, dropping the support. The FIFA 23 hype is here. But as I mentioned, I've got one of the craziest investing methods that really, I, I don't know how we haven't thought of before because it definitely existed, but now is the time to execute on it. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. So as we know, there's always going to be some sort of low price team of the week that rises in price after team of the week one. And this year, I really do like this Triori card because it's not super expensive. It's not super flashy, but the stats on it, I mean, 88 pace, 80 uh, defense, 83 physicality, 81 uh, dribbling, plus it's plus five on his base card. It's probably going to be one of the best right backs in League On. So if you've got a couple PSG players and you don't want to buy Hakimi, this might be the guy people go with. Plus it goes out of packs at the end of the week. Well, you want to invest in this card, right? It's going to go up, but it's 13,000 coins. And if you don't have a ton of coins to use right now, well, you don't actually want to be spending all your coins on such a passive investment like this. Well, this is where the trick comes in. You can buy up to five of these cards, basically getting them as a loan. Here's how it works. We'll go ahead and buy this card for 13 and a half thousand coins. And I've been trying to get it for a little bit less, but let's just go ahead and buy this one for 13.5K. All right, now we've got him and we can go ahead and actually quick sell it right away. Now we've only spent 3,000 coins on that card and it's gone, but not forever. I can go back to my quick sell recovery at any point throughout the next week and I can go get that Hamari Triori. So in six days time or seven days time, when that card is rising in price, maybe it's at 16K or 17K or if we're lucky, even higher, I can just go get that card back for the 10,000 coins I discarded it for. And during that time, it's gone from 13K to 17,000 coins. And I only spent 3,000 coins on the investment. That is a pretty clever trick that we're gonna use at the beginning of this year. And I can do that with four more of those cards. And I'll probably do it with three more just in case like I accidentally quick sell something important and really just need to use the quick sell recovery. But that's how it works, guys. So pretty solid uh, little method right there to where you can keep your coins and actively trade with them on the market with whatever you need to do while still making a solid passive investment. And of course, Hamari Triore is not the only card that that's going to work on. Let's talk about investing in cards that are rising, that are meta, really meta. Vinicius Jr. is probably the best example of it. I, I, I imagine I probably threw him on the thumbnail as well. He's about 125,000 coins already at 86 rated, and he's actually going up as it's getting later into the night. Wow, how much is he? Because he was just at 120,000 coins not too long ago, 140K just an hour later. Maybe just because there's not a lot of cards being listed, maybe he is actually just rising that much. Either way, this Vinicius Jr. card is such a spe spectacular investment, and we've already seen it rise a ton. Here is my advice for which cards are going to be the invest best investments. One, you want a good nation, you want a good league. So if it's in a top five league, that's good. If it's Brazilian or French or English, it's probably even better right? Hamari Triore is a good investment because it's in Ligue 1, but if he was French, I mean, it would be so much more expensive, right? So Vinicius Jr., we've seen that card rise a ton. His card has been spectacularly uh, in terms of investing. Uh, I also had a comment on my last video about Nkunku, and Nkunku went from 35,000 coins. During the, the release of my last video, he is almost doubled in price as well. At least he's getting close to it. He's up to 61,000 coins. Somebody asked me, should I invest in one Nkunku for 35K or should I invest in three Dybala for 10K? And well, I said to go with the Nkunku and Dybala hasn't even risen while the Nkunku has gone up 25,000 coins. Well, here's the reason I said Nkunku. The cards that are more expensive now 
are the ones that will continue to rise the most because they're just not affordable yet. The buying power is really determining which cards are going to be the most expensive. So right now, Vinicius Jr. has risen a ton because people are starting to get into the coin bracket of 100K or 70K, 150K. As you guys can see, my coin total up there on the top right is 100, or I didn't mean to take a screenshot, I meant to zoom in, is 113,000 coins. So I'm finally up into that price range where I could probably get a Vinicius Jr. if I really wanted to. But now that everybody can afford Vinicius Jr., the next step is going to be those really elite cards, Mbappe, Icons, maybe even Cristiano Ronaldo or anything else that is super, super high rated and also super expensive. Those are the next cards that we're going to see a big rise on in their price because as people can afford them more, more people will buy them. And with more people buying them, their price goes up. It's all about the buying power right now. There's a reason that Messi was going for like 80K on the first couple hours of the web app. It's not because he's not worth more than that. It's because nobody had any coins to actually buy him yet. So that's the reason we're seeing these cards just now starting to rise. So we've seen Nkunku go up a lot. We've seen Van Dyke go up a lot. We've seen Vinicius Jr. go up a lot. The next cards that are going to rise a ton are going to be those really high rated meta cards. But you're going to still be asking questions. Should I invest in Gabriel Jesus, right? It's very affordable. It's a starter card for sure. He's going for about 9,000 coins. And here's what I'll tell you about a card like this. He's a good card. He's usable and people will be buying him. In fact, I think a lot of people probably already have bought this card. But on top of that, he's only 83 rated. He is from a great league and nation, but he's also only got three star skill moves or not three star skill moves, but three star weak foot. So it's not the perfect card. It's not super fast. It's not really extravagant in any way, shape or form. It's just a good starter card. But after we start getting better strikers and SBCs and are able to afford something better, it's not going to be Gabriel Jesus you want in your squad. And what's going to happen is everybody who had him in their starter squad is going to sell him. So the supply for Gabriel Jesus is actually going to be so much higher than what you would expect. Even if you went out of packs for ones to watch, I just do not think it's going to be that crazy of an investment. Now, it is maybe going to be better than what we saw in previous years, like with Danielle Malin. Everybody loved that as a starter card. He was 80 rated. He had great pace. It was a good card. And he was like 1.2K before ones to watch dropped. He got into ones to watch and everybody thought that gold card was going to skyrocket in price. And it didn't. It didn't go up in price because everybody already had that Danielle Malin who wanted it. And anybody who had the coins was just going to upgrade that Daniel Malin from gold to ones to watch and sell the gold card. So that's just more supply. Even if it wasn't coming from the packs anymore, the supply was just coming from people's clubs. So when we're looking at out of pack investments, we don't want to really focus on the meta that much. Those aren't going to be the cards that rise the most for us. It's going to be those low key squad building challenge cards that nobody thinks about, that nobody over invests in. Let's go ahead and say that this is Melee card. I talked about him a little bit on stream earlier, and if you guys haven't followed me on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash elite, the link is down in the description of the YouTube video. Is Melee is a pretty average card, and I don't think anybody's going out of their way to put Is Melee in their team unless they've already got him in their club, right? You slap Is Melee in your squad and your starter squad, but you're not going out like, oh, wow, I need Is Melee on my team. He's going to change the game for me. Not That doesn't exist. Yet he's still 1,400 coins. Where's that demand coming from? The demand is coming from the advanced SBCs and possibly maybe a little bit of marquee matchups as well. So the demand is SBCs. So if you took this card out of packs, the card would continue to be needed for squad building challenges. And so he would get more rare and more rare and more rare. These people that are buying him are submitting him into an SBC and then that card no longer exists ever again. And so there's no supply coming back onto the market. While if you bought a Gabriel Jesus for your team, well, you can list that card at any point. It's not really leaving the game. The supply is still there. 
it's just not coming from packs. It's just coming from people's clubs instead, or maybe even their transfer list as an investment. These are the cards that rise the most. Last year, we picked up Felipe Anderson. It was a left mid Brazilian rare card. Was needed for a lot of the advanced SBCs, um, like these ones, right? And so he was about 1,500. I bought 30 of them for 1,500. The investment was like 50,000 coins. And my return on investment, I made 300K. The year before that, it was the exact same thing. I did a Kolarov, 82 rated left back in the Serie A. And that card was about 2,000 coins a pop. And I bought 40 of him. And he went up to 8,000 coins as well. It works on a couple of cards every year this early. Now, it's not going to work once we get into week 7, week 8, week 9, as the new team of the weeks and the new promos drop. It's just not going to be the same anymore. However, for the first couple weeks, it's going to work brilliantly. Because one, everybody's doing advanced SPCs. And two, these cards haven't been on the market long enough to where pulling them out for seven days isn't going to have some sort of effect on them, especially if all of the cards that already exist are getting thrown into SBCs never to be seen ever again. The supply is just going to drain, and that's why those cards go from very cheap or at least somewhat cheap, like the Ismaili at 1500, to maybe a lot. Now, Ismaili is a good example because he possibly could get into ones to watch, although I doubt it. Um, but that's just an example of a card that would if you went out of packs. So we've got to adapt. Maybe during the UEFA Nations League, over the course of the next couple of days, somebody performs really well. You say, okay, they're going to get into Team of the Week. And, well, he's being used in SBCs. He's already 2,000 coins. Yeah, that's going to be a card to use. But if you go ahead and look at a card that's like 700 coins or, or 400 coins and it's just not used in anything, and there's no demand for that card whatsoever, taking it out of packs isn't really going to change much because there's not any demand existing for it in the first place. So I would definitely make sure to double check, see where the demand is coming from, which SBC is it, and see what the alternatives are. Because let's say Ismaili, you know, gets taken out of packs, as I said, but there's probably going to be another player that might keep his price down just enough, like Ren and Lodi. Ren and Lodi is going for maybe 2,500, 3K. Yeah, 2,500, 2,300. So that Ismaili card could rise about 1,000 coins, and it will go above Ren and Lodi. But because there's another option as a Brazilian rare right back that's gold, it's not going to go extinct. So obviously, you got to take that into consideration as well. The final thing we're going to talk about today is Marky Matchups, the new SBC. It's four windows. Overall, it's worth doing. I didn't get anything spectacular out of my packs, although I did pack Lukaku, who unfortunately on my transfer list, I can't actually sell because the price range is broken. However, Marky Matchups has stimulated the market the way we needed it to go, right? It has stimulated the market for cards that are required for the SBC in those cards, but it's also added buying power to the game, which has made other cards go up in price. It's what we needed. Here's the thing, it has opened up so many different sniping filters, most of which are with rare cards. So if you go with gold and then rare, you can go with a lot of these different nations that are here and find different positions that work very, very well. For example, England, position, center back, right here, and we go for um, a thousand, we can see there's no results. We'll go ahead and search even higher, no results. We're going to have to get up to somewhere over like 2,000 coins almost before we start seeing some players like Konza or Gehi. Um, and I believe there's a couple other cards that are somewhere in this price range. So there's quite a few different cards that you could actually get in this filter. And I'll go ahead and zoom out for you guys so that I don't have to keep scrolling. It makes it easier for you to see the whole filter. And you're just going to continue to... Uh, update the bid price if you don't want to update the uh, maximum buy now price what you can do is after you get up all the way to 700 as, as you continue searching is you can just set your chemistry style to basic and that's going to refresh all the searches for you so you'll clear you'll start again at zero you'll go back to 150 and that's a just a creative way to get uh, another refresh another creative way to get a refresh is we can get rid of basic and we can add 1500 to the max bid price and go up one by one on those until one pops up. And the reason we do this is because you need to change your search every single time you search or you're going to not get updated cards that are getting listed and you might even get some cards that have already sold pop up, which is gonna slow you down, it's gonna annoy you. And that's why you have to refresh your search every single time that you're going on these sniping filters. So center back England, gold rare. That's obviously a good filter. You might even be able to do the same thing with Brazil. Um, 
Brazil looks a little bit cheaper. Maybe you'll be able to do that with the left backs. Um, because you've got, yeah, Ismaili. We talked about him earlier. Um, what's another one? You might be able to do it with center backs from Germany. So let's try that one. Center backs from Germany. Let's see where they're sitting at in terms of price. Yes, yeah, so we got Jonathan Ta, you got Hubers, anybody else in that in that uh, filter as well? Huber, Stark. Um, so you got at least three players there. A minimum of three, and you might get lucky and get an even more expensive player. So you can search that filter, and there's tons more that you can just naturally find by continually searching different positions from these nations. And most of the time, it's center mid, center back, or striker. Those are the ones that are going for a lot right now. You can do the same thing at center mid here. Demir Bay is the cheapest, but I assume there's a couple other options. There's Musiala. There's actually Julian Brandt at a position change. I sniped him earlier using this filter. So a lot of different sniping filters to go with here and a lot more that you can discover on your own. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to hit that sub button for more FIFA 23 content coming out soon. If you've made it to the end of the video, the comment that I am going to ask you guys to comment is how many coins are you on right now? How many coins have you made over the first two days of FIFA 23 on the web app? Are you sitting at 5,000 coins, 50K, 68K, 100K? Maybe you have more coins than me already. Maybe you pack something insane. Let me know that as well. But let me know how many coins you have in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.